And he was the one responsible for installing our pastor as the interim pastor here at Freeport Bible Church 30 years ago. And so it's, uh, you know, we are just privileged to have him here this morning. We are privileged to have Sister Edge come here likewise with us. And we want to invite him just to come at this time. And for just before Reverend Edgecombe comes, he is one of the leaders of our community, Carmichael Community Church in Nassau, presently. And he has so much, so much, so much more. But before he comes, I want to invite the team to come. And afterwards, Church. I am, I am encouraged by the fact when testing and trial comes that if the Lord bring you to it, he will indeed bring you through it. So continue to worship him. Continue to praise your way through because we serve an awesome God. Do you believe that today? Well, worship with us.
salvation and glory. have to appreciate where you've been and where you've come from to understand the emotion that I feel this morning. Had it not been Glory and honor and majesty, power and dominion belongs to our great God. I know I'm pushed for time, but I just, I, I just had to let them sing that because there's an appreciation that I have for my God. I 
Remember the story of Jesus when the disciples and the Pharisees and others criticized Mary for pouring out her alabaster box and anointing him. And he says, you don't understand. You don't understand. She loved much because she experienced much. She know where from which, from whence he brought her. And I can tell you this morning, I know from whence I came. Amen. I'm so delighted. I, I mean, I don't want to take my time to talk about, about small stuff, but I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to be here. I want, uh, I want to recognize my beloved wife because that's why I'm here. Would you stand, babe? We've, uh, we've been through some rough times. We've had our struggles. And we thought that maybe it would never, it would never be. We thought that the end had come. But I stand here this morning and you say, my God. My God. And so I want to praise her, for she is a woman far, far above women. She excels above all. I honor her this morning. Give her a hand. I respect my brother and my friend. We go back, as you have heard, some 30 plus years, Pastor Alton. And the, and the day that I made the decision to have him take over this ministry, I never dreamt, never dreamt that I would see and I would be where I am this morning. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for the vision. Thank you for your hard work. It pays off. Pastor Roach, thank you so much. Ed, uh, Pastor Emmer, Pastor Kyle, and all of you who have made our stay here this weekend uh, great. Uh, we had an awesome, awesome experience at the Accelerate uh, Conference. I believe that that's going to be the uh, impetus that's going to propel Camichael Community Bible Church forward. And I thank you for inviting us be a part of it. Praise team. I, you're awesome. I, I, the time is coming. The time is coming. And I'm going to say, and soon will be when we shall invite you to come to share at Carmichael Community Bible Church. Thank you, uh, Toastmasters. I know I've got to be careful up here because you've got uh, keen ears, and I know how you like to do public speaking. I'm well aware of that, but uh, we shall do our best. And we thank you for coming, and all of you who are visiting with us this morning, God bless you. I want to start this morning by making a statement that comes out of our own experience, and maybe you can identify with us. Relationships can be messy. How many people can agree with me? Relationships can be messy. And you know what? Sometimes you look in people's homes and you come by, when you go by, and you see all the nice photos on the shelf. Usually, when you, And they usually have them prominently placed uh, as you walk in. And you look at them and you say, wow, beautiful. But I wonder sometimes if you go behind the scenes, if you will find those nicely Photoshop experience. 
How many of you have had a conflict? You ever had a conflict? You ever had conflict with your kids? Conflict with your spouse? Uh, conflict with your brother? Conflict with your sister? Conflict at work? Yes. Now, maybe some of you had conflict this morning because, you know, coming to church on a Sunday morning can be one of the most frustrating days in your life because sometimes you got the kids who not, won't cooperate in getting ready. Sometimes you have the husband who is a little slow. Or maybe it's the wife that's taking so long to put on the, you know, the stuff on the face. And, and so it can be, you can run into conflict. Uh, but in most conflicts, I, I guess, let me back up. I guess no one can understand conflict more than a pastor. Because usually when there is a conflict going on, you know, most people don't call up the pastor and say, Pastor, uh, everything is doing so great at our home today. No, they call up the pastor when things are about to fall apart and things are really devastating. You're ready to walk through the door. Then you call the pastor. And in most conflict, I just say, in a home, parents and, and teenagers, usually it's something like this parent walks into the teen room and finds their phone and they says, oh, let me just check out this, let me just check out this smartphone, see what they got on here. And they pick up the phone and they say, hmm? oh, panic strikes. What in the world is going, I'm going to call the teacher? No, I'm going to call the pastor. And they call, they arrange for the pastor to come along uh, or, or for them to go to the pastor and then they, they walk in the pastor's office and the teen goes something like this, walks in like this, and he, that, you know, he's saying, yeah, I'm really ready to talk about what's on my phone. I can't wait. I'm really excited about it. Or if in a marital situation, one spouse wants to fight for the marriage and the other one, not sure what they want to do, and so they both show up at the pastor's office hoping that the pastor is going to talk sense into the other one. And here's what commonly happens between the accused and the accuser. The accused usually get the accused by themselves, and they find out that, you find out that there's some strong feelings about uh, what went wrong. And often the question comes up, well, hey, have you told the other person about your feelings and about the stuff that you're going through, and uh, the response goes something like this. No. And I'll never tell them anything. Why? Well, you don't know. But the last time I opened up to, fill in the blank, last time I opened up to my spouse, to her, to him, to my child, to my employer. And then later you bring the other person in, and usually the accuser has a list of, la a laundry list of things that they are going to spill out to you. And if in the case of a parent, they will have a list of discipline measures maybe they have taken uh, in the process. Well, I took the phone away, I took the car away, I took their bed away, I took the room away, I took their toothbrush away, I did everything. Nothing worked. Or in the case of a marital situation, it goes something like this. The spouse says, oh, listen, you don't know all the things I've done to reboot this marriage. I've scheduled a marriage conference, we've tried that magical date night, We've tried to, uh, 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 you don't know. We tried this, we tried that, we tried everything. And then the question comes up, well, why don't they, but I don't understand it. Why don't they ever tell me anything? Why doesn't he open up to me? Why doesn't she open up to me? And so you got two sides. One side saying, I'll never tell them anything. And the other said, why won't they tell? Now you could see 
that right in that situation, there is a bomb waiting to explode unless it is diffused. I said at the beginning, relationships are messy. And that a relationship cannot survive if there is tension that's built up waiting, waiting for someone to pull the fuse. Well, through my experience, I have found that uh, there are a couple of principles that have helped me, helped me along, helped to make my relationship healthy and strong. And when I've used them, I've won. My relationship just blossoms. And when I fail to use them, well, relationship falters. And I want to share them with you this morning. And I want to do so by an illustration. I hope they'll throw that up on the board, throw that up there for me. I want to use an illustration of an airplane. And you see it, Bahamas Air. Well, you know, an airplane is, is, is a useful vehicle. But you know, the most important thing about an airplane is not its ability to fly. Although you find that very useful going from here to Miami. No. But what makes an airplane most useful it's not the ability to fly, but it's ability to land. Because I'll tell you what, if there's a plane that's always crashing, I'm not going on it. I'm not going there. I'm looking for one that's going to be able to take off and land. And you know, but every once in a while, I, I, I've been on, a, on, on several aircrafts, and one time I was on one of these Bahamas Airway flights, and we went into Miami. And when we got there, the guys who uh, run the tower, they must have told uh, the captain, listen, you can't land. You're not clear to land. We got some stuff going on down here. I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, you can't land right now. And so what happened? When a, plant can't, when a plane can't land, it goes into what is called a holding pattern. And that's hence the title of the sermon this morning, the holding pattern. And what happens in a holding pattern? Well, the plane just flies around and around and around the airport. And you get really worried. And you get concerned because you're saying, boy, I wonder if we're going to run out of fluid, fuel. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen here. I wonder if we're going to crash. I wonder what's going to happen. Is something bad going to happen? 